Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about rational expressions. A rational expression is just a fraction, but the numerator and the denominator of this fraction are polynomials. And remember with a fraction, our denominator can't be zero. So if we have a rational expression that is p divided by q, the polynomial q can't equal zero. That's because division by zero is undefined. So a rational expression is undefined when the denominator is zero. Look at the first examples. Find any values of the variable that make the expression undefined. Your keyword undefined and the fact that you have a rational expression tells you to just look at the denominator. And we want to look at that denominator, t squared plus 1, and determine when it would be 0. Because if it becomes 0, it's undefined. So we need to solve this for t. Subtract 1 from both sides, and you get t squared equals negative 1. Well, when does t squared ever equal negative 1? Never because whenever you square something, it becomes positive. So, for example, one, there are no variables or values for the variable t that will ever make this rational expression undefined. Let's look at example two. Again, we wanna know when it's undefined, so we only concentrate on that denominator. So we wanna know when is x squared plus five x plus six equal to zero. Well, with a polynomial like this, we're gonna need to factor it. So we'll have two terms and it equals zero. So we have x and we need to determine what two numbers multiply to six and add to five. Well, that would be two and three, right? And they're both positive. So now using that zero product rule, we know that either x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. So we can solve each of these and we get that x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 3. So the answer for number 2 this would be undefined when x equals negative 2 or negative 3. Now remember when you have a fraction or a rational expression that if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same value, r and r here, that it's exactly the same as the original p over q. Well, we can use that in reverse. So we can simplify something by finding factors and simplifying out what the numerator and denominator have in common. And then another trick to remember is negative signs in rational expressions. So if you have the term b minus a, this is equivalent to negative 1 times the reverse, or a minus b, as long as a doesn't equal b. So if you see that as a fraction, b minus a over a minus b, or something similar, that always simplifies to negative 1. Let's look at a few examples where we're going to use this basic principle of rational expressions, factoring and canceling out or simplifying what's common in a numerator and a denominator. So the first two examples, we need to simplify the expression. So example one, if we factor out the numerator, we have the factors two times two times two, which gives us eight, and x, and then y cubed is three y's. And then if we factor out that denominator, six is two times three, x squared is two x's, and y squared is two y's. So now, anything that's common as a common factor in the numerator and the denominator 
simplify out as 1, right? 2 over 2 is the same as 1, so that simplifies out. And what else do they have in common? They both have an x, so that would simplify out as 1, and then they have two y's in common. So when we simplify out all of those common factors, our numerator, we're left with 2 times 2, or 4, times y, and our denominator, we're left with 3x. Now in 2, we have two binomials. The numerator is a binomial and the denominator is a binomial. So we need to factor each of those and then see if they have any factors in common. So what can we factor out of 2? The numerator um, has a GCF of negative 1. So if we factor out negative 1, the numerator becomes negative 1 times 6 plus x. And then what's the GCF in the denominator, 18 plus 3x? Well, a 3. So you factor out the 3, and you have the binomial 6 plus x. Now notice that the factor that the numerator and denominator have in common is 6 plus x. So the 6 plus x is the full factor that gets simplified here. And that results in negative one-third as the simplified expression. Let's look at a few more examples on page two. So example one and two here, we have binomials in the numerator and the denominator. So again, we want to factor each of those, factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and then see what they have in common that can be simplified. So example one, the GCF in the numerator is an x. So if we factor out an x, the numerator becomes x times x minus three. And then we look at the denominator and the GCF is a six. So factor out the six and it leaves the binomial x minus three. And notice that the numerator and the denominator both have the binomial x minus 3 as a common factor, so those simplify out because they would be 1. So our simplified expression is just x over 6. Now look at number 2. Remember that rule I showed you on the other page about negative signs and rational expressions? That's exactly what's happening here. We have x minus 9 over 9 minus x. So the fraction itself follows that rule and is a negative 1 simplified. And then we have the negative in front. So if we have the opposite of negative 1 or two negatives, that simplifies to a positive 1 or just 1. See how remembering that negative sign trick comes in handy? Now look at example three. This example is a little bit trickier and only because the numerator and the denominator are both trinomials. So just remember that when you're simplifying a rational expression, you need to factor first. So don't think about this being a fraction. Think of it as being two trinomials that you need to factor. So if we concentrate on the numerator, we need to factor x squared minus 3x plus 2. So we know we're going to end up with two factors. So we need an x for each because that multiplies and gives us the x squared. Then we concentrate on the constant 2. What two numbers multiply to give you 2? Well, 2 and 1. Now they need to multiply to, to a positive 2, but they need to add to a negative 3. And the only way to add to a negative 3 is if they're both negative. And notice, we add those, negative 2 and negative 1 is negative 3. But when we multiply negative 2 and negative 1, it gives us our positive 2. Then we look at our denominator, x squared minus 4x plus 3. And again, we're just concentrating on factoring that. So we know we need an x for each binomial. 
and we're looking for the two terms that would factor and multiply to 3. Well, again, that's an easy one. It's 3 and 1. But again, they need to add to a negative 4. So once again, these both need to be negative. So once you've factored, you're going to look at the factors of the numerator and the denominator. So notice that the numerator has two factors x minus 2 and x minus 1. And the denominator has two factors, x minus 3 and x minus 1. What factor do they have in common? The x minus 1. So that whole factor has to simplify. And that results in a simplified expression of x minus 2 over x minus 3. Now, you can't simplify these x's. They're not factors. It's x minus 2 is the whole factor. So don't fall for that, that mistake of trying to factor out the variables just because they're alike. They have to be factors, or they have to be things that are multiplied together. Have a question or a problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments, and I'll include it in one of my videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.